Hey everyone, it's James here, and I'm upping my production quality. I just bought this Blue Yeti mic, and yeah, one of my subscribers has asked me to improve my audio, so I'm spending more on production. Um, yeah, so please subscribe so I can make up for the $200 I spent on this microphone. So yeah, um, I'm also, in some of my videos, you saw me going through the system design primer, where I'm going to be going through like being basically offloading all of my system design knowledge, but I'm also going to sim simultaneously be offloading some of my algorithms knowledge. And I'll be doing that by doing theory courses or theory based videos like um, the one I'm going to do today on Big O. But then I'll also do like a bunch of lead code questions on this channel and show how I get those done. So yeah, that th those are my ideas for videos to make. And yeah, that's probably what I'll, those are the videos that I'll be making for the next one to two months. So please subscribe and let's just get straight into this. What is Big O? So Big O is the language engineers use to describe an algorithm's efficiency. Big O essentially calculates the runtime, but it's not exactly about timing how long an algorithm is going to take. It's more about calculating how an algorithm or figuring out how an algorithm is going to scale as the input gets really big. And I'll show that on a graphing calculator. Um, another thing to keep in note is I like when I'm going to be showing some pieces of code and then I'll be analyzing the, the time complexity or the big O. And when you're looking at code, take it like take into account all the different independent variables and you need to represent all those independent variables inside of your inside of your big O notation when you come up with the final time complexity. Lastly, big O often refers to time complexity, but big O also applies to space complexity as well. So in in a lot of interviews, you'll be giving the time complexity and you'll also be having to give the space complexity and, and you'll do both of those using big O notation. So big O essentially is um, just simple math functions. Like you've probably seen all of these functions if you've taken any calculus, um, probably even just the basic calculus. If you if you took limits, you 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 know like how you you've seen all of these functions before. So O of one means like just constant constant time, and these are typically operations like accessing a specific element in the array. Log n is a logarithmic function, so these are often used in divide and conquer algorithms like binary search. Oh, sorry. If I said O of 1 was linear, I meant constant. I think I said constant, but just reiterating that. O of n is linear growth, where each element is processed once. Then we have 2 to the power of n, or sorry, we have n squared, which is polynomial growth. Then we have to the power of n, which is exponential growth. And then we have like n to the power of n, which is factorial growth. And I'll, I'll show like there's other variations to runtimes, but these are the main one, two, three, four, five, six runtimes. And in an interview, you'll 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 mostly be using these six and there there will be slight variations to them. But let me just quickly show them on a graphing calcul calculator so you can see like how this actually works. So what is constant time? Uh, what does a constant time um, O of N or time complexity look like? So we have this um, graphing calculator here. On the Y axis, we have our runtime. And on here we have, on the X axis, we have our input size. So as the input size grows, you'll see how the runtime gets affected. So the most optimal algorithms are usually uh, constant time algorithms. You can see here that as the, as the input size grows, the algorithm doesn't take any longer to run. You see that no matter, if you put like a, a input size of a million, it's still gonna be this constant of like, it's still gonna be this straight line. So those, those are the most optimal algorithms. The second most optimal algorithms is log of log logarithmic al algorithms. You could see here as the input size grows, it's essentially like 
not growing or the as the input size grows the runtime doesn't grow that fast and then we go to linear here you can see it's growing a lot faster it's a lot slower than or yeah basically the runtime is growing a lot faster as the input size grows but it's, it's mapping one to one so it's not really that bad like for every one like as the input grows the runtime like grows proportionally so you can see it's just pretty much a straight line and you can see like per one in piece of input size or or for, for yeah uh, for each one input size it grows by one on runtime like whatever unit you're using the fourth one is um, polynomial alg algorithms those are like n squared n3 n4 and you could see that that grows a lot faster than like linear time so with even just small input size look how short how fast the runtime like explodes so uh yeah so like with small input size your algorithms are going to take way longer to run so usually you want to you want to start optimizing when they start getting to n squared and then everyone like has heard the term of like something growing exponentially so you could see that happens here so that's number five here, growing exponentially. It's pretty much, it's way slower than two to the n, especially if you get to very large numbers. So as the input size gets very large, let's bring it back here. So you can see kind of, yeah, that's essentially what happens here. It's, it, it's as the input size grows, it, the runtime grows exponentially, which is bad because you every, like, Pretty much, you can't get anything done. And then the very, one of the most inefficient algorithms are ones that are like n to the power of n. So you can see that's even worse than exponential because as the base here grows, it also grows the exponent. So five to the power of five. Um, usually the base here controls like how fast this grows. So three, you can see three is, um, yeah, basically the bigger the base, the, f the, the worse the exponential algorithm is. So if the base also grows with the input size, it like leads to a very inefficient algorithm. And you can see like the black line here is literally the worst. So that's kind of at a high level what O of N is. And let me quickly actually show some piece of code of all of the different um, runtimes. So first, this is... Um, this is an algorithm, and this algorithm is actually a constant time algorithm. O of, it's actually O of 1. Why is that the case? That's the case because as the input size grows, this two, we'll all, like, we're always just accessing, accessing the zeroth element. So accessing the zeroth element never takes any more time. Right? So pretend we had an array of like a million we had an array of like a million elements. If we just access the first element using like the zero, that's always gonna take us the same amount of time no matter what. So yeah, so you could see like that one kind of grows like this. It's just a constant line. Binary search, this the, binary search is a technique where you search in a sorted array and you're able to find the sorted Sorted, sorted array by the process of elimination. So pretend I have like um, an array of seven, right? And I'm looking for the number number one. What binary search does is it looks at the first element and then it sees if the element is greater or larger that or greater or smaller than the number I'm looking for. Since I'm looking for the number one, I know I don't even have to look at like this whole half of the array. So I essentially cut half of my search space without even checking those other elements. And then I could do the same thing from here. And I'll see um, this is greater than, so I can cut this. And you can see I found, like I'm able to cut my search space by half every time. And usually, and that's what a logarithmic al algorithm is. Log two to the power of X, like it's basically, it's when you cut the, the, the search size in half. So yeah. So that's what this is. That's why no matter the input size, it grows slower because you're essentially cutting half. Like imagine I just add uh, 
an extra like eight here, it's still gonna be the same algorithm where I cut half and then I cut half. It, it like it, the algorithm does not get that much slower. What do we have here? So this algorithm or this algorithm right here finds the maximum in an array. It's, it's not a sorted array. So we so like the fastest way to find the maximum in a non sorted array is by literally just searching the whole array. So let's do like let's just throw an array of like right if I want to find the maximum of, of the array, I have to look at every single element. Right. So if we extend the array, like we add more elements, I have to look at those new elements as well. That's why this one grows proportionally to the input size. And that's why we call it a linear algorithm. It's growing proportionally to the, to the input size. Every time I add an element to the array and then I run this function, I have to like, like it's going to take me one extra unit longer. So pretend it takes one second to look at each element. If I have an array of 10, then it'll take me 10 seconds. And if, if I have an array of 20, it'll take me 20 seconds. So it grows kind of proportionally. Find duplicate pairs. So find duplicate pairs. This one is, is a polynomial algorithm. But more specifically, it's n to the square. Other polynomial ones are like n to the 3, n to the 4. And n to the 2 is better than n to the 3. And n to the 3 is better than n to the 4. But usually when you get to like n to the 3, n to the 4, those are pretty inefficient algorithms. So why is this n to the square? Um, that's because like, let's say the input size of this array is n, right? Then for each element, I'm literally checking it against all the other elements. That's what this is doing. It's starting at i, and it's checking against all the other elements. Then you check this, this element. And then you check that against all the other elements too. So you can see for each of the ones, you're checking all the other elements as well. It actually leads to like more of like one over squared, one half, or, and it's more like, it's, 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 yeah, I, I don't want to overcomplicate this because you, you see like it's not completely checking against all the other ones, but this generalizes to n squared. Like, uh, actually, a better algorithm to, would be, like, if I was searching a 2D array, right? If I was searching a 2D array of, like, n, n width or n height and n width, for me to search the whole entire array for a max value, I'll have to do n to the n, and that equals n squared. So as, like, the array gets, gets bigger in height, it will also grow in width. And I'll have to search more elements, if that makes sense. So what's the next one? So yeah, that's our, oh, that's our n to the squared algorithm. Let's go to 2 to the power of n. These are algorithms that like are growing exponentially. And usually, like here, 2, we call in, in a lot of algorithms classes, we call that the branching factor. So the bigger the branching factor, the more inefficient the algorithm is. So the bigger the base, essentially, for all the math nerds out there, the bigger the base, the, the worse it is. So you can see 3 to the n is growing way faster. So yeah, um, when you're thinking about this in algorithms, like we have this Fibonacci, how this works is like to find the answer, you create one. Um, it basically each each element each like call to the function splits into two, right? And it splits into two. And depending on the n you pass here, um, defines like how how like big this tree gets. But you could see from there um, we already like pretend each of the nodes is something we have to process. You could see that like pretend one, two, three, four, n equals four. So that's how fa how much it branched off of. So for n equals four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like around 16, just for n equals four, right? Pretend the base was three, like we, 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 we branched by three. Um, 
it essentially would add this. It would add, um, yeah, it would essentially add that. And then it would add this. And add, like, it, it's gonna, just cause I up, upgraded the base to three to the end, you can see that adds a lot more. So three to the four is gonna allow, allow like create way more nodes to um, process. And that's, those algorithms are pretty inefficient. And the worst of all is end to the end algorithms. That's when the base also grows with the input size. So you see this one is, is the base is three because we're generating unique passwords. So like what this algorithm would look like is if we want to generate unique passwords, we would first, um, we start with a blank and then um, let's choose A as our first number. And another option is we choose B and another option we choose C. And then here we choose like A, B, and then another one we choose A, C, right? And then from here we go like A, B, C. You could see like, at, if I introduce D, the, the number of options here changes, like grows by like a factorial. Um, it's like the base here, like I, like I mentioned before, the base controls like the branching factor. So if the base grows with the input size, which is what N of N does, it leads to a very inefficient algorithm and it grows like way, way faster than, than like if the base was static. So yeah, hopefully uh, that's just a quick run through of all of the different um, algorithms. I'm not sure if I explained it well, please leave comments if I didn't explain it well and I'll go even deeper into it and I'll, I'll redo this video. But yeah, the common runtime, like just to summarize, the common runtimes that you'll have to deal with when it comes to interview is O of one, which is constant time, log of N, which is logarithmic time, O of N, which is linear growth, N squared, which is polynomial growth, two to the N, which is exponential growth, and then an end to the end, which is factorial. So cool. Yeah. Thanks for everyone for watching my video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about space complexity or sorry, time complexity and space complexity it's used all the same, but that's what big O is in a nutshell. See y'all in the next video.